That was interesting. That was really very interesting. And what I'm going to do now is that while I'm welding, I'm just going to turn the dial up little by little and see what happens. If we start with pure argon and then slowly add the CO2, what actually happens to the weld seam? Have you ever wondered why you need this protective gas when welding? And then there are different gases in different mixing ratios. What's this all about? Today, I'll clarify this and use practical examples to show you what effects the individual gases and without gas have on the welds. Today we use mag welding of unalloyed steels, common structural steels. I know that can happen to all of us when the gas bottle is empty, but something has to be welded. Then we think, oh, this should only last a little bit. It's just for the house, for DIY. That's not a huge burden. I'll do that without gas. So take the component and let's try it out. How's that going? Yes, look, it's welding. I can weld without any problems without gas. Okay, the weld doesn't look so nice now, but if necessary, we'll grind over it. A little bit of black silicone paste over it, and it looks good. Nobody will know that. It'll hold up. Or will it? Yes, and here you can see the result. It only takes a bit of stress to break the seam. Please don't forget that this is 8 millimeters and that I welded here with almost 200 amps. But the seam doesn't hold at all. What is the problem? When welding without a protective atmosphere, you expose the hot melt to the air, to the atmosphere. And what happens then? Oxidation takes place. At the same time, you get a lot of pores in there. It's like Swiss cheese. All the pollutants stay there. A slag forms. The weld seam becomes completely unstable and tears immediately because it is simply brittle and does not hold anything. Less than you think. And what we must not forget, the welding process is completely unstable. It's like a whirling dervish. The arc dances around, you don't have a proper melt, there's just hullabaloo. And of course there is no control of the welding process. Okay, we need a protective gas. Now I'm standing in front of all the bottles at the specialist retailer and thinking to myself, here we have argon, here we have CO2, here we have a mixture of these gases. Which bottle should I take now? Doesn't matter, I'll take any one of them. It'll be fine because it's protective gas and that protects my weld seam. No, 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 it's not that simple. That's why I prepared something for you today. The company Wit Gas Technic supports us in this because they have provided a special gas mixer. This is not a simple pressure reducer, but rather it can mix two gases. So that we can finally clear up the questions, I've got a 100% argon bottle and a 100% CO2 bottle. Now it's getting exciting. Let's try it. Let's take a bottle with 100% CO2. Why? Because that's how it used to be done. That's how it was invented. People thought about it. How can I protect the welding process from air, nitrogen and oxygen? Let's take CO2. Tests were done and the weld seams turned out well. And then another effect was discovered. The CO2, the active gas, reacts with the heat, with the melt, and we have a brutal burn-in penetration. Now that was really very interesting. So they thought, great, we have the solution. This is how we do it now. And they did. Well, there were a few know-it-alls who thought, we can do better. I now see that the arc is still a bit too unstable. I have spatter developing. We can definitely do better. And then the idea of argon came. Why? It was found that when a tube was filled with argon, the arc that was ignited inside was much more stable and it has a cool purple color. We can also show it in a video. And then they thought about it, the arc is so super stable. Let's use argon as the protective gas for mag welding. 
And that's what they did. And then it was discovered that they had no burn-in penetration and they couldn't get a decent weld. With 100% argon in mag welding, the active component is simply missing. The process is not good here either, but we still welded. However, we see that it is not as stable as with 100% CO2 because the burn-in penetration simply does not happen. But it's still better than if we simply don't have any protective gas. Yes, damn, they thought, okay, the argon thing for mag welding doesn't work. That's why it's called mag, metal active gas, go back to CO2. But there was another smarter person who came up with the idea Let's combine the advantages of CO2 and argon, mix it up. And that's why the gas mixer is here. Because then we can use the super effect of CO2, which protects the melting and creates better burn-in penetration, and the argon for a stable arc. Let's mix it up and try it out. Of course, we need larger components for this experiment. So I prepared something here. We're doing this now. The point for us is that we have a long length here to show you this cool effect. I'm also really excited to see how this will develop. We'll see if we see any difference at all. Now we know the properties of argon and the arc that stabilizes it there. The problem with mag welding is that if we use 100% argon, then we see that the arc is not stable here either, because it lacks the CO2 component. That's the trick. And I would now like to show you exactly this trick with the mixing ratio. This is where the gas mixer comes into play. As I said, we have 100% argon here. Here we have 100% CO2. Of course, we can also adjust the flow, and I set it here to 10, and here my line goes to the welding machine. Both are connected to our mixer. Now I can mix my CO2 with the argon and do so in a percentage ratio. That means we can adjust from 0 to 25%. And what I'm going to do now is that while I'm welding, I'm going to clone myself at that moment, I'm just going to increase the control little by little and see what happens. If we start with pure argon and then slowly add the CO2, what actually happens to the weld? step so the last world must be full on Okay, super cool, that was brutal. Experiments like this are always exciting because we can see live what is actually happening thanks to the mixer's two bottles. We start with 100% argon, and of course, as expected, the process wasn't great. We did have a brutal flux coverage, but I saw that I had zero burn-in penetration. 
Then it continued, and I noticed when we slowly added the CO2, the second weld seam was around 2% CO2. Suddenly, boom, the whole thing stabilizes and I can weld normally, even at 2% CO2. Here, the weld seam looks good with 5% CO2, but the appearance of the weld seam, the surface is still too unclean and dirty for me. And then it slowly went towards 10 and 15%. And that's where the weld seams get really nice. What am I seeing here? The process becomes quieter, it stabilizes, and spatter development decreases. Smoke development, that's very interesting. The smoke that is created is minimized, and you can simply see how the weld gradually becomes cleaner. But the interesting thing is that in the range from 10% CO2 to 20% CO2, you will only see minimal differences visually. You can see for yourself in the video. The surface becomes finer, but what I saw when welding, when we went towards 15-20% CO2, as we did in the experiment earlier, is how the arc slowly constricts and digs in. This means that the burn-in penetration at the end will be significantly higher than at the beginning. But when it comes to the mixing ratio, you can of course do something wrong or make a mistake unconsciously, if we use the wrong gas or get the wrong mixture. As at the beginning, without any gas at all is bad, we know that. But as I said, if the mixing ratio is not right for the application, then the weld seam is not okay. The weld seam becomes unstable and components could fail. This is a safety risk. As an example, 2% CO2 in argon may not be suitable for mag welding of unalloyed steels. We can see here that it's not perfect yet, it's still a bit too unstable, but it can be the best mixture for chrome nickel steel welding and alloy steels. That's why choosing the right gas for your application is so important. I am very grateful to the Witt company who provided me with this gas mixer, because basically that was the only way I could show you. Because I can rely a thousand percent on how I create the mixing ratio. And that is also the point that often speaks in favor of such a gas mixer. If you want to be a thousand percent sure and document your processes, a gas mixer like this is not a bad idea because you can rely on what kind of gas you have mixed yourself. Of course, there are other countries where certain gas mixtures are not available. We here in Germany are very spoiled. We get the right gas almost everywhere, but not absolutely everywhere. And you can adjust your ratio yourself with a gas mixer like this. Best example. If we go and say, I want to weld steel, I want to weld chrome nickel steel, I want to weld aluminum. Theoretically, I need three bottles. A mixing bottle with 18% CO2, an argon bottle, and another bottle with 2% CO2 in argon, so I can weld my chrome nickel steel. And of course, a mixer like this can help in a company. It doesn't have to be the small bottle, it can be the large 50-liter bottles, and then you can adjust your gas for each application. Plus, you can of course experiment like I did. This means that you can decide for yourself which mixing ratio you want to use for your processes. What's also interesting is that the Wit company also produces large gas mixers, where you can combine different gases with each other. Because there is not just one mixed gas for steel welding, 18% CO2 in argon. There are even three or four different gases, and they in turn have different properties. So a really exciting story. On the side again today was my PicoMig 220 single-phase machine on 220 amps. That's why I was able to weld these 8mm plates without any problems and show you. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I would be happy. I love you guys. Until then.